The Fault in Our Stars by John Green Mortality's Solace In the dimly lit basement of an Episcopal church, its stone walls forming a cross that seemed to embrace them. Hazel and Augustus found solace in the cancer support group. The room was arranged in a circle of chairs, each one occupied by a fighter. Their stories whispered softly or carried silently in their eyes. Patrick, the support group leader, an adult survivor with a depressing life story, presided over the gathering with a somber air. The atmosphere was heavy with conversations about treatment, survival rates, and personal struggles. Hazel and Augustus sat side by side, a quiet refuge in the midst of it all. Their silence spoke volumes, a shared understanding of the weight they carried. So, what's your story, Augustus? Hazel asked, her voice a whisper that cut through the room. Augustus turned, his young face holding an old soul's depth. I believe we're all on borrowed time, Hazel. I want my existence to mean something, to leave a mark that's more than just a scar. Hazel, her own scars whispering reminders, pondered. I used to think that way, but now I wonder if it's not the mark we leave, but the moments we share that matter most. Their words meandered through the philosophical, drawing them closer like stars bound by gravity. We're all stories, aren't we? Hazel continued, her gaze distant. Maybe it's not just the ending or the mark, but the chapters, the words, the pauses. And the people we share them with. Augusta smiled. It's the sharing that gives our stories color and life, intertwining them with others. Together they wrestled with existence, finding comfort in the infinite significance of connections and moments, despite their limited time. As the session ended, they lingered, reluctant to leave their sanctuary. Will you come with me? Augustus asked, his voice steady but eyes vulnerable. To Amsterdam, to meet Van Houten, he continued, referring to the enigmatic author who had captured Hazel's imagination. Yes, she replied without hesitation, her heart racing at the adventure and the prospect of answers. I'll come with you. And with that, their story continued, a journey that would shape their lives and intertwine their narratives forever. And with that, they stepped out of the circle, leaving behind the echoes of shared struggles and the dim glow of the basement. They emerged into the night, the cool air stark contrast to the warmth of their recent connection. The stars above, witnesses to their unfolding story, twinkled with a knowing light. As they walked, the city around them felt like a map of possibilities, each street a different narrative path. The journey to Amsterdam loomed ahead, not just a physical voyage, but a pilgrimage for answers, for closure, and perhaps for a new beginning in their intertwined tales. A wish to fulfill. Hazel lounged in the living room, lost in thought. Her mother peeked in a gentle smile on her face. It's like the author knows me, Mom. It's weirdly comforting, Hazel shared, feeling the connection to her favorite book. Her mother agreed. Books can be the best friends, can't they? The doorbell's chime interrupted their moment. Augustus burst in, his grin infectious holding a manila envelope high. I have news, he declared. We have an invitation to meet Peter Van Houten in Amsterdam. Hazel's excitement was palpable, but a shadow of concern crossed her face. Amsterdam. But how can we... Augustus interjected. Don't worry, I've got it covered. I've reached out to the Genie Foundation. They help kids like us live their dreams. Hazel's father nodded. If they understand the significance, they might just make an exception. Augustus's eyes sparkled with determination. This is more than a trip. It's a chance for answers about life and everything in it. Hazel, moved by the possibility, felt a surge of hope. Let's try, she said, her voice steady. With that, they sprang into action contacting the Genie Foundation with a heartfelt plea, daring to dream of Amsterdam's canals and the answers that awaited them there. Hope, 
once a flickering flame, now burned brighter within them. As they gathered around the kitchen table drafting their message to the Genie Foundation, Hazel's mind raced with visions of Amsterdam, the winding canals, the vibrant tulips, and the chance to sit across from Van Houten. To finally understand the end of her story, the anticipation was a bittersweet symphony, each note a possibility, each chord a dream inching closer to reality. Amsterdam Odyssey. The city of Amsterdam, with its intertwining canals and vibrant streets, became a canvas for Hazel and Augustus's unfolding story. They wandered through the city, hand in hand, each step a silent promise to make the most of the moments they had left together. At the Orangey restaurant, they were greeted with a view of the canal so close it felt like they could dip their fingers into the water. The hostess, with a warm smile, made them feel like they were the only two people in the world. The conversation flowed as easily as the water in the canal, with laughter and shared confidences. They talked about everything and nothing, and for a while they forgot about the cancer that shadowed their lives. Later they found themselves at the Hotel Philosoof, a quaint place that seemed to understand the need for rest amidst life's relentless pace. After a brief rest, they ventured out again, this time to the Anne Frank house. Climbing the narrow stairs, Hazel felt the weight of history pressing down on her, but Augustus was there, his presence a steady support. Their meeting with Peter Van Houten was brief. The author's demeanor was not what they had expected, and they left feeling a mix of emotions, but their bond remained strong. Their last day in Amsterdam was spent wandering the streets, soaking in the sights and sounds of the city. They laughed and talked, creating new memories to cherish. As they sat on a bench in a park, Augustus pointed out the elm tree seeds dancing in the wind, likening them to tiny wishes. Hazel couldn't help but feel hopeful, believing that some wishes might just come true. And in that moment, with the sun dipping below the horizon, they knew their Amsterdam odyssey was something they would forever hold dear. Seeking Closure The room was silent except for the soft ticking of an old clock on the wall. Hazel and Augustus sat across from Peter Van Houten, the author who had become a recluse, his eyes hidden behind thick glasses. Mr. Van Houten, Hazel began, we've come a long way to ask you about the ending of an imperial affliction. What happens to Anna's mother? We need to know. Van Houten shifted in his chair. Life has no neat endings, my dear, he said gruffly. Why should my book offer what reality does not? But your characters, they felt real to us, Augustus said, leaning forward. They deserve an ending, even if it's only on paper. The author turned his attention to a half-empty bottle of liquor. Characters are figments of imagination. Once the story ends, they cease to exist. Van Houten peered at them. You seek closure because you're looking for answers in a world that's full of questions. Not everything has an answer, Hazel, Augustus. Sometimes you have to find your own meaning. Hazel felt a mix of emotions. But we came here for answers you hinted at in your book. Van Houten's eyes softened. I wrote those words, yes. But I don't have the answers. I'm just a man who writes, nothing more. Augustus reached for Hazel's hand. Maybe we don't need his answers, he whispered. Maybe we'll have something else, something that we've created together. It's not the closure from a story, but it's our own understanding, our own journey that continues beyond the pages. They left the room not with the answers they had hoped for, but with a sense of peace that came from acceptance. As they stepped outside, the Amsterdam air greeted them, familiar and comforting. They walked side by side, not towards an ending written by someone else, but towards a future they would write together. Facing Reality As Hazel returned from Amsterdam, the magical bubble burst, and reality hit hard. Augustus' declining health became starkly apparent. 
One afternoon in Augustus' bedroom, he revealed the cancer's progression. It's in my lymph nodes now, he said, his voice weak but steady. Hazel bit her lip, stealing herself. Augustus expressed his desire to organize a pre-funeral. I only hear what people have to say about me while I'm still around. I want to experience my own eulogy, he explained. Hazel, understanding the urgency, nodded in agreement. The pre-funeral took place in a small side room of the literal heart of Jesus' church. Friends, family, and acquaintances gathered, their faces bearing the weight of grief and love. Hazel witnessed the raw emotions of those impacted by Augustus' life and impending death. During the pre-funeral, Hazel experienced profound moments that would forever imprint on her heart. She saw the depth of love and sorrow in the eyes of Augustus' parents as they interacted with guests. When it was her turn to approach Augustus, she felt a rush of emotions. I love you, Gus, she whispered. You've taught me so much about life and love. As the pre-funeral concluded, Hazel realized this was just the beginning of their journey towards acceptance. Augustus' health continued to deteriorate, but in that moment, surrounded by love and support, she found strength. The experience offered her a new perspective, a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. The love they shared would endure, leaving an indelible mark on her heart, guiding her through the challenges ahead. A Eulogy of Love Hazel stood before a room filled with loved ones, her heart heavy as she remembered Augustus Waters. He was my friend, my confidant, my partner in crime, but most of all my soulmate, she began. Our love story was epic and infinite. In our numbered days together, he gave me a forever that defied time and space. Hazel's voice trembled as she continued. Augustus always found light in the darkest times. He understood that life is short and he lived purposefully. He didn't seek fame or leave grand monuments. Instead, he chose to walk lightly, spreading love and kindness wherever he went. Her eyes scanned the room, resting on familiar faces touched by Augustus' life. Augustus taught me that true heroism lies in loving deeply. He noticed the beauty in everyday moments and paid attention to those who mattered most. It's not about what we achieve, but about how we touch the lives of others. Hazel's voice cracked as she shared. In my grief, I realized the impact he had on me. He loved literature and cherished the poem. Nothing gold can stay by Robert Frost. It reminded us that beauty and innocence are fleeting, but their transience makes them precious. As Hazel concluded, her eyes filled with tears. Augustus may be gone, but his legacy of love remains. He taught me that even in the face of mortality, there is hope, and our little infinity matters. So to you, Gus, my love, my hero, my star, you will forever stay gold in my heart. The room erupted in applause, a testament to the love and admiration for Augustus. Hazel stepped down, her heart aching yet filled with love, knowing Augustus' spirit lived on in the hearts of those he touched. Reflections of Love and Loss Hazel sat in her room, the silence a stark contrast to the past. Hey, Gus, she whispered. I never knew it would be this hard. She flipped through the book, stopping at a passage they had read together. The door creaked open and her mother peeked in. How are you holding up, sweetie? Hazel looked up, her eyes brimming with unshed tears. I keep thinking about him, Mom and I'd choose him all over again. Her mother sat beside her, an arm around her shoulders. Remember the love and joy he left you with. Hazel nodded, a small smile forming. He will stay. Right here, she said, placing a hand over her heart. As days passed, Hazel began to see the world anew. One evening, as she gazed at the stars, she murmured, You brought me both, Gus, and I'm grateful for every moment. Hazel's journey was a testament to the love that had blossomed between two souls, a love that would continue to inspire and guide her through the darkest of times. As she gazed up at the stars, Hazel felt Augustus's presence around her, his love and spirit infusing her with strength and courage to face the future. 
Legacy of Love. As Hazel's journey continued, she found strength in the silent echoes of her past. The memories of Augustus, though distant, were a constant presence in her life. They did not need to be spoken aloud to be felt. They were woven into the fabric of her being. In the quiet solitude of her thoughts, Hazel acknowledged the profound impact Augustus had on her life. She carried this understanding forward, not as a burden, but as a treasure chest of wisdom. It was not about the words he had said, but the love they shared and the resilience it fostered within her. This love was her guiding light, leading her to new horizons and possibilities. Hazel embraced the future, honoring Augustus not through words, but through the very act of living fully, with every breath a testament to their shared infinity. As the days unfolded, Hazel's resolve grew stronger. She sought new adventures, each step a tribute to the love that had once set her world ablaze. In the company of friends and the embrace of family, she discovered that life's tapestry was rich with threads of connection and moments of unspoken understanding. With each sunrise, she greeted the world with a renewed sense of purpose, finding beauty in the mundane and lessons in the unexpected. Her heart, once heavy with loss, now beat with a rhythm of gratitude and a quiet determination to honor a legacy not just carried within, but lived out loud. Hazel's story was far from over. It was just beginning to unfold in ways she never could have imagined. 